Oh, hey everybody, it is your good friend El Topo here, somewhere between uh, Roger Ebert and Chocolate Rain. That's what I am. And uh, I just wanted to talk to you guys about a movie that I just had the pleasure of watching, uh, Quentin Tarantino's new film, uh, Inglorious Bastards. Uh, now, if you know anything about me, I'm a huge, huge Quentin Tarantino fan. So, uh, I'd like to say that this, this review is completely unbiased, but uh, I do love the guy's work. But I'm honest when I say if that if it, was, if it was a stinker, I'm not the kind of person that's going to blindly support uh, a piece of crap. Um, but anyway, um, movie is fantastic. But let me just say uh, first and foremost that the thing that isn't fantastic about uh, not this movie, but going to movies in general, is that uh, man, theater crowds, terrible. You know, I'm not sure about this, but I can almost tell you with 100% assurity that um, there was no doctors, no heads of state, no off-duty policemen. Uh, in other words, there was no one in that theater that needed to be contacted during the two hours that that movie was on. No one in that theater was that important. Yet, everyone in that theater, I feel like, had their goddamn phone on, and I had to listen to their fucking phone ring, phones ring, sorry, throughout the entire movie. You're not that goddamn important. Turn your fucking phone off. If you can't uh, afford the luxury of turning your phone off, if your life is that important and you have to get calls 24 fucking 7, then stay at home. Ruin the movie for the people in your house. Don't ruin it for me. It's fucking irritating. Another thing, while I'm on the topic of annoying, annoying audiences, when subtitles appear on the screen, please don't make loud groaning sounds. This film uh, has a lot of uh, French and German and even some Italian uh, dialogue spoken in the film. Uh, it was redundant. Uh, and of course it's subtitled. Uh, Quentin Tarantino made this movie kind of like international. most international movies are made. Uh, if a character is living in France talking to people uh, in France, they usually speak French. Uh, it's not like American movies where the characters go all over the world and somehow everyone speaks English. But there's there's some subtitles that you got to read in this movie. Not a lot. It's not like you're reading Othello. And you would have thought that uh, that all the people in the theater, or at least the, the vocal ones, had just received word that they had terminal cancer. I mean, if reading is that much of a challenge for you, and if it's that, if it actually causes you physical pain, then maybe you should stick to the Chronicles of Riddick or something, and stay the hell out of the theater. Again, just stay home. It's cheaper. You'd be happier. Uh, I just don't know. Is reading that that bad? Anyway, uh, back to the movie. Um, this is a, a fantastic movie, first and foremost. Um, if you're not familiar with the plot, it's uh, it shares a lot in common with... It actually doesn't share many things in common with... Uh, it, it, the title in Glorious Bastards is actually a... Uh, uh, the same title, well, the same Italian title of a uh, Fred Williamson movie um, about commando GIs in World War II, but it's it's not about Jew commandos in World War II, and it it's but anyway, that's just Tarantino being Tarantino. He's making an allusion to a movie that seven people saw, and anyway, uh, this movie actually has more in common with uh, in plot anyway to that Daniel Craig movie Defiance. Except, Defiance was terrible and nothing happened and it was really boring. Uh, and this movie is fantastic and the Jews really kick a lot of ass. I mean, this is this is like the most ass-kicking things, you know. This, like, Abraham didn't kick this much ass. It, 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 these Jews kick ass. But anyway, it's about uh, these Jewish commandos um, that, that are just like the worst of the worst, you know, badass uh, motherfuckers. And uh, they uh, they just brutalize Nazis, and their team is put uh, smack dab in the middle of uh, German-occupied France, and um, that's kind of where the movie starts to unfold. And there's other things that happen, but I don't want to give too much away because the plot is kind of clever, and uh, I don't like to spoil the entire movie. Um, but I, I will say uh, that this movie, uh, first and foremost, the cast is fantastic. 
Uh, Brad Pitt's great. Eli Roth's great with his his crazy Boston accent. Um, everybody's good. Uh, the, the the guy that stands out the most to me though is uh, I can't remember his name. They call him the Jew Hunter, but he's the he's like the super bad guy. I mean, the guy in the movie is somewhere between the Joker, Darth Vader, and just like a Hannibal Lecter almost. Like he's this sinister guy, but he's also has this weird kind of warmth to his character and like humor but he can also like turn on a dime and be like this super you know malevolent evil guy and he's a fantastic character it and the the actor is fantastic i'm not familiar with anything else he's ever done but the guy is brilliant but every every uh Every actor in this movie is fantastic. I, I really thought it was well cast. Um, of course, the dialogue is good. Um, there's actually m one probably my favorite scene in the whole movie. It opens up with um, with that the German guy, the super, the Jew hunter guy. He goes into this uh, French uh, farmer's uh, house who's suspected of smuggling Jews, and it the the movie just opens up with this long uh, conversation between the two of them, and the conversation just gets so tense and it's it's just so well done it, it it like crescendos it's it's a beautiful scene um and uh it's a great way to start the movie it really punches you right in the face and i always appreciate movies that grab your attention right away um but uh it, it's really good the thing is that this movie works on so many levels the the music is great uh as far as uh is, while this isn't my favorite Quentin Tarantino film, I will say that I think this is this is maybe the best film he's ever directed. Um, it looks really, really good. It's a lot of high production. Feels almost classic, uh, for lack of a better term. You watch this and it feels like a, a little bit more like epic, like an older movie, like you know The Devil's Brigade or something to that effect. Um, but it's good. Uh, it moves very well. The plot is serviceable enough where um, nothing feels bogged down and it moves very quickly. Um, you don't feel like the movie is holding itself up. And again, um, you just get caught up in the great dialogue and the, the great actors. Um, again, the, I don't like doing these reviews when I like the movie. I, I like tearing apart movies. I don't like praising them. But I got to say that this movie is, is a real special one. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see... Um, you know, award buzz around this one by the end of the year. I, I think it's really good, and it's something that I think even um, non-hardcore uh, Quentin Tarantino fans like myself, I think will appreciate. Um, I mean, it is a little violent, but at the same time, uh, it's, you know, it's a violent time. War is violent, and I think that the it's not the over-the-top uh, gore fest that, you know, the cartoony gore fest that like something like Kill Bill was. Uh, I think that the violence is justified. And as we all know from playing Wolfenstein, you should never feel bad about torturing Nazis because they're fucking Nazis and they're scum, so it doesn't matter what you do to them. Um, but uh, check this movie out. It's it's really its own beast. Um, it's nothing like Tarantino's done before, and it's really quite good. And I think uh, um, a big step in his career, I, it's, I, it, I thought it was amazing. I really enjoyed it. So... Um, Go check it out. I hope you like it. If you don't, um, don't send me any hate mail, please. Or, well, you can send me hate mail. At least I'd be getting some attention. I appreciate that. Uh, anyway, have a good night. Bye.